call me crazy, but this week, I'm chasing the elusive 100% Britannomyces fermentation, and I'm brewing a gnarly pale ale. Most people agree that modern all Brett beers were pioneered by Tom Arthur from Pizza Port in Lost Abbey and Peter Buchart from New Belgium with Mo Betta Bretta. And soon after by Russian River with this beer, Sanctification. That was in 2004 and since then other brands like Avery and Crooked Stave have followed suit. Last time I tried this, it didn't work out super well and that's because not all strains of Brett are able to fully attenuate wort. This time, I made sure to choose the perfect strain and I'm taking advantage of some research conducted by White Labs. Now, let's make some beer. For this beer, I'm using some local spring water and I'm adjusting the water profile using gypsum, calcium chloride, and canning salt. While this step isn't necessarily required to make good beer, it definitely helps, especially if you want to make something great. I like to make all my adjustments in one kettle and pump my sparge water into a hot liquor tank if necessary. The recipe for today includes about 57% pale two row, 12.5% each of white wheat malt and flaked oats, and 6% each of rice hulls, golden naked oats, and carapils. I'm gonna mash in at 122 degrees Fahrenheit or 50 degrees Celsius, and then ramp that up to my target mash temperature of 152 degrees Fahrenheit or 67 degrees Celsius. Let's do this. Once everything is nice and saturated, I'll slowly heat the mash to 152 degrees Fahrenheit. Once we're up to temp, I'll start a 45 minute timer. Hopefully, this will create highly fermentable wort and give the Brett a good chance at full attenuation. In the last episode, we made a porter that was destined to sour in a small oak barrel. While the mash finishes up, let's head inside and check it out. Primary fermentation is complete, and that means it's time to funk up this porter using Belgian Sour Mix 1 from White Labs or WLP 655. This blend contains all the good stuff, Brett, Lacto, PDO, and Saccharomyces, and it's the same thing I used for the Lambic style beer I made in episode 12. After dumping my soda ash solution out of the barrel, I'm jumping right into the transfer. Let's get this thing moving. Of course, I had to take a little sample for scientific purposes, and now that I have a baseline for this beer, I'm stoked to see where it goes from here. We've got about 10 minutes left in the mash and I'd like to start recirculating to clear this up a bit. I probably wouldn't recommend full on stirs at this point, but I do like to rake the top of the grain bed. This keeps me from creepily staring at the kettle while the wort recirculates and I like to think it helps with extraction and prevents a slow draining or stuck mash. With that out of the way, let's yank these grains and get our boil started.
Now that the basket is up and out of the wort, I'm rinsing the grains with about a gallon of 170 degree water that I pre-treated with the mash water. With the sparge complete, let's crank this thing to full blast. Once we're up to full boil, I'll start a 45 minute timer. We're 45 minutes into our boil and it's finally time for our first hop addition. Here's one gram of Dr. Rudy and two grams of Galaxy. According to Beersmith, that should start us off with about three IBUs. It's also time to start sanitizing my fancy new plate chiller. With five minutes left in the boil, it's time for our next hop addition. Here's five grams of Galaxy, which should bring us up to about five total IBUs. All right. Our boil is complete and I'm dropping the temperature down to 180 degrees Fahrenheit or about 82 degrees Celsius for some steeping hops. I'm not sure why I didn't do this before getting this new chiller, but check out that whirlpool action. Time for our last hop edition of the day. Here's 20 grams of Dr. Rudy and 40 grams of Galaxy, bringing us up to almost 40 total IBUs. I'll maintain 180 degrees for the next 30 minutes and then get everything set up for fermentation. Holy shit. I wish I would have recorded that in real time because this new chiller is insanely fast. I probably just saved an hour of waiting around and who knows how much water. To make sure there's enough oxygen for the Brett to quickly multiply and ferment this beer, I picked up a cylinder of oxygen and I'm aerating the wort with the Blickman oxygen flow regulator set to one for 90 seconds. I'd love to get this thing set up in line with the chiller, but for now, I'm using the Anvil oxygenation wand to inject the oxygen into the wort. Now, I'll just toss this thing into the mini fridge, pitch the brett, and let it hang out for two to three weeks at 76 degrees Fahrenheit or about 24 degrees Celsius. While there are a few strains of brett capable of fully fermenting a beer, I decided to go with WLP648 and it's such a beast, I didn't even make a starter. For other strains, I'd recommend a pretty big starter and research seems to show that souring the wort may also help reach full attenuation. I'm planning to double dry hop this thing with Dr. Rudy and Galaxy, more to come. If you like this video, let me know in the comments and consider subscribing so you don't miss the next one. Thanks for hanging out with me today, I'll see you again soon. Thank you.